I hiked up here this evening because it's far enough away from the city that I don't have to deal with light pollution, and it's far enough away from the ocean that I don't need to deal with fog. I'm trying to take a picture of Orion's sword, like Orion, the constellation in the sky. And specifically, his sword contains multiple nebulae, and I want to try to get multiple of those in the same frame. And it may not work. This is my second attempt. But you can't just take a camera pointed at the night sky and click. It's really difficult to take pictures of the night sky because the night sky is dark. I mean, that's why it's not day. The sun's not out. So the only light that's coming is coming from stars and reflections of stars off of distant dust clouds and things like that. You can't use a camera flash the way you would in a dark room to illuminate something like the Milky Way because you'll be waiting for that light to come back for thousands of years. The solution to this problem is to take very long exposures and therefore collect a lot of light. But there's a problem with that and that's that Earth is spinning. So if you have a camera sitting here on Earth's surface pointed at the sky and you take a long exposure, the whole sky looks like it's moving, which means that your image is going to streak out and all the stars that are nice pinpoints are going to like turn into streaks and your picture is going to be awful. That's why I built this polar tracker. A polar tracker spins the camera at the same angular rate as Earth spins, about a quarter of a degree per minute. It's not very fast, but it makes a huge difference. From the camera's perspective, this means that the stars don't move, but the ground does. Because the light from each star hits the same part of the camera sensor all the time while it's tracking, you can collect light for a very long time without the stars turning into weird streaks. You can buy a telescope mount for thousands of dollars, you can buy a polar tracker intended for DSLRs for a few hundred dollars, or you can build one yourself for a few tens of dollars. I think that mine cost about 20, and then I upgraded the ball joint from something that I had laying around to something that was about another 20. So this polar tracker is cheap, it's a very simple design, and it lets me take some pretty good pictures compared to just putting the camera on a tripod. It's known as a barn door tracker or hinge tracker because it pivots around a door hinge. It's based on the design by Gary Serenik, originally published in Sky and Telescope, but you can find that on his website. I used different parts than he did, different motor, probably a different hinge, certainly different gears that I found on Amazon somewhere, but the basic operation is the same. You start with a large hinge that you can just go buy at the hardware store. Try to find one that doesn't rattle too much. You add a quarter twenty tapped hole at the bottom to accept a tripod thread. The, the threading in the bottom of every camera and tripod standardly is quarter 20. You add an off-the-shelf ball joint to the top for aiming the camera, and then of course the actual motor and lead screw assembly that slowly pushes the hinge open, tilting the camera. The mechanism is actually very simple and quite similar to the time-lapse slide that I built last spring. This curved section is the length of 832 threaded rod. I think I actually bent by hand into a semicircle. It doesn't need to be super precise. It's anchored loosely at the top with some dampeners from my box of quadcopter parts to give it a little play. Again, not very precise. It just needs to move at a certain rate. The threaded rod goes through a hole on the bottom half of the hinge, but in between there's a plastic gear with an 832 nut hot glued in the middle. As this gear spins, it meshes with the arc of threaded rod and pushes off of the bottom of the hinge, so the top of the hinge is forced upwards. I run the motor off this external USB battery pack. It's something I normally carry around, especially backpacking, to recharge my phone and camera, so I figured I'd make the barn door power from 5 volt USB and not need to lug around another battery. Of course this device needs to move the camera at a very specific speed, so the power to the motor needs to be regulated. I used an LM317 in voltage source mode to accomplish this, cutting down the 5 volt USB supply to somewhere around 2.5 volts, adjustable with a multi-turn 1 kilo ohm trim pot. You can turn that trimmer to adjust the voltage to the motor if the tracker is going too fast or too slow relative to the sky. With a 1.5 crop sensor camera, at 50 millimeters I can take a 20 to 30 second exposure with no streaking with this setup. At 12 millimeters for the wide angle shots, I typically take one minute exposures and they come out really nicely. Today, I'll be using my new 210 telephoto, which should give me a window of sky about four degrees by six degrees. However, it's a slower lens, which means that I'm gonna need longer exposures 
or in this case, many stacked exposures in order to get enough light. To use a polar tracker, you have to align the axis of rotation with Earth's axis of rotation by pointing it at Polaris, the North Star. In the case of a large equatorial telescope mount like this one, that axis is right here. This joint pivots at the necessary a quarter of a degree per minute in order to keep the scope aimed at the same spot in the sky. In the case of the much, much simpler barn door mount, the axis of rotation is the axis of this hinge, which I normally just align to Polaris by eye and double check by pointing the camera at Polaris, moving the rig by hand and basically watching to see that Polaris doesn't move. You should be able to put the tracker in any angular position and Polaris shouldn't move. Once the tracker is set on Polaris and running, the top half of the hinge is fixed relative to the sky. You can aim the camera anywhere you want with that ball joint and it will track the sky properly. When you take pictures of really dim objects, all of the useful data that your camera is capturing is in the bottom few percent of the sensitivity of the camera sensor. So if you want to take a picture like of a nebula, then you will in post-processing take that last few percent and stretch that data to fill the entire 0 to 255 color space, which generates a lot of noise, or at least amplifies a lot of noise, because you're taking a very little bit of data and you're trying to extrapolate more from it than is actually there. So the solution to this is stacking. You take literally hundreds of pictures. I, I used a program called Deep Sky Stacker and I took a few hundred pictures the other night of Orion's sword and you basically average them all together to smooth out that noise which means that you can take that low really dim edge of the spectrum and stretch it to fill the entire color space and it still looks good. Once I had a stacked image out of Deep Sky Stacker you can take it into Lightroom or any other uh, like developer sort of program that lets you make adjustments to it as if it were a normal brightness image that you took during the day. And this is what I ended up with. It's not exactly what I was hoping for, but I'm reasonably happy with it. I was able to resolve M42 very nicely, but that's visible to the naked eye, so it's not a huge deal. I was more happy with the fact that I was able to pick up the Running Man Nebula and the Flame Nebula with you know, moderate detail. I still was not able to resolve the extremely faint Horsehead Nebula. I was originally planning on doing a full like HDR multi-stack treatment of this image, but based on the quality of this first deepest stack that I processed, I determined that it was just not worth it. I'm going to try to take this picture again once Orion is visible higher in the sky, which unfortunately means I'm going to have to wait until fall because Orion has now set. But I was shooting like at the horizon, so it was very difficult to uh, get good images of Orion when you're shooting through that much of the atmosphere. There was a lot of haze, and it's clear because the quality of these pictures suffered from it. So not all of the projects that I undertake actually you know, work out 100%. I guess that's sort of implied in the channel title. But I, regardless, I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something about tracking the sky with an equatorial mount. So thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more projects.